Hello, York City. Um, welcome to the Council Spotlight. Um, this is a show where we feature various businesses and organizations throughout the city of New York with the hopes of you learning a little bit more about them and then also coming out to support them. So I'm Sandy Walker, Vice President of City Council, and I'm here at Mi Caldero Restaurant with the owner, Mr. Oziel Bones. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to ask some questions um, in regards to your business, your organization, find out a little bit more about you. A lot of times um, when it comes to just human beings in general, we kind of stick into our own little bubble. And here in York City, what we want to do is kind of expose our citizens to what's out here in York City because we have a lot of great things going on. So I'm just going to ask you some questions okay. um, so that hopefully folks can get to know more about you and your restaurant. Okay. So um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background here in um, York City? Well, I was born and raised here in York City. Um, lived here all my life before going off to college in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, spent the better part of 11 years in Philadelphia. And then back in uh, 2009, uh, I jokingly tell people, but it's kind of serious, that mm -hmm. mom tricked me into coming back to York and <laughs> doing mi caldero. Um, mm -hmm. People had always told her um, she's been involved here in the city for, she's been here in York for 40 years, her and my father. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's always been involved in different things throughout the city. And she was one of the uh, original people that helped start the Spanish uh, American. American Festival, mm -hmm. um, which was previously at Cristo Salvador. And then now, then once they consolidated, got moved to St. Mary's. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so okay. for years and, and that's years. that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, every and, year it is. And for years, people would always say, Carmen, open up a restaurant, open up a restaurant. Because she was one of the first Spanish interpreters at your hospital. Oh, okay. And that's what, that was her full-time job. So mm -hmm. she said, I'm opening up a restaurant. And I said, <laughs> well, how are you going to do that? And long story short she asked me to come down and just help her open it up mm -hmm. and it actually was around this time nine years ago wow. um, we're getting ready to celebrate our nine-year anniversary here next month okay and uh, here I am back in York awesome awesome so um, tell us a little bit about your experience with, with opening the restaurant I know your mom got you to come back in 2009, but how was the experience just opening a restaurant? Did you have any experience in this particular business or? No experience mm -hmm. um, in terms of opening up a restaurant, running a restaurant, managing a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, I have friends that are in the restaurant business mm -hmm. and I've, you know, helped them out. So, you know, you try to um, pick up pointers and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just base it on you know past experiences as well you know in the corporate world and you know regular jobs also a lot of different things apply but mm -hmm. in terms of the restaurant business specifically no experience wow wow so that says a lot because nine years you know a lot of times with businesses you know getting through that first year is very difficult so um it must say something about your food of course being good so will you tell us a little bit about your cuisine and what you guys offer here um well we my parents are from puerto rico mm -hmm. um and so we do puerto rican food mm -hmm. um which is uh i like to call it latin caribbean food mm -hmm. it's very similar to cuban and dominican food um, and it's similar to all the different types of foods throughout the caribbean uh the biggest difference being um the influence in terms of uh, the spices that we use. So mm -hmm. ours, obviously, we speak, our second language is Spanish. Um, so and when we were colonized by Spain, we were influenced by the spices that the Spaniards brought over um, and incorporated it with the uh, native Indians and the Africans mm -hmm. um, that came over. So um, our food is very uh, savory. Uh, we slow cook everything, nothing spicy. Um, you add spicy if you like it on the side. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a huge misconception that people have is that our food is similar to Mexican food, which tends to be the you know, most well-known uh, Spanish food, mm -hmm. um, especially in this area. Um, so, you know, we've had to do a lot of educating mm -hmm. uh, people in terms of uh, our food, where it comes from. Mm -hmm. um, and I enjoy that because I'm, I'm into history period and I'm also obviously into the history of our food and where it comes from and why do we prepare certain dishes certain ways and mm -hmm. you know seeing you know influences 
not just from Spain, but from other parts of the world as well. So that's really cool. Okay, okay. So are there any like um, fan favorites over the past nine years that are? Uh... We have quite a few. Um, okay. You know, we, we actually started um, kind of in referencing, have you ever done this before? Mm -hmm. Our menu was huge mm -hmm. uh, when we first started, because you don't know, because you, okay. I mean, you want to, you know, uh, give everyone everything. Right. And, um, you know, in that first year, you know, I kind of, uh, along with my mom, who's, these are all her recipes, mm -hmm. so I always call her the mastermind behind uh, the food, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we kind of scaled things back um, in terms of menu items, mm -hmm. um, and we kind of really just focused on creating a consistent product, a quality product, um, so that we can, you know, get it out to the masses and, mm -hmm. you know, get people, um, in York City and York County as well uh, to come out and you know try it and give it a shot and mm -hmm. that's actually worked really 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 well so okay. in terms of uh, you know crowd favorites you know our philosophy here is you know make a, a few things but make them well all right. the time so when people ask I'm like everything on our menu sells mm -hmm. it just kind of depends on the day okay um, gotcha. so um, but I mean we have you know, the roasted pork is very popular. Mm -hmm. um, our yellow rice with our, with gandules, which are pigeon peas, is extremely popular. Mm -hmm. um, our mofongo, our empanadillas. Um, the other one, the one though that kind of has, has caught me by surprise over the years is the canoa. Uh, it's a sweet plantain stuff with ground beef, mm -hmm. and then we melt okay. cheddar cheese over top. Mm -hmm. You and had that at a taste of York City, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, and and that that was actually a different version of the one that we serve here because oh, we, we made okay. it as an empanada there. Okay. Okay. Um, it was good. <laughs> but it's just, it's the same it's the same idea and mm -hmm. um, I, people it's just very popular and you know a lot of people kind of freaked out you know when they hear the word plantains and they think bananas and that sort of thing but mm -hmm. um, that's if I would have to say one that kind of surprise has surprised me over the years of how popular it is mm -hmm. but I think it, it also goes to show that we do have a community that it is beginning to explore um, their uh, palate mm -hmm. um, which is kind of always one of my uh, complaints um, especially initially coming back to York was that people here are scared to try new things um, right so that's been you know really really awesome as well so. mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So I know that you offer authentic Puerto Rican cuisine. And so um, my question would be, when it comes to, um, I went to Puerto Rico one time and I remember coming back, but my first time going to Puerto Rico, I tried mofongo. Is that how you pronounce yes. it? Mofongo. So I remember coming back to your restaurant and um, asking if you guys made it. And you did. So are you the only restaurant in York City that offers mofongo? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I mean, there's, there's a, you know, and, and, you know, within the Latino community, um, we do have, and, you know, we're a very proud culture, mm -hmm. um, and we do have um, small differences between, say, Cuban, Dominican, uh, Puerto Rican food. Mm -hmm. But like I said, lots of similarities, right. you know, and mm -hmm. so I think there are other restaurants, okay. um, you know, uh, small mom and pops just like this that mm -hmm. um, also make mofongo. They just kind of put their own, mofongo is one of those things where um, you can kind of put your own twist to it. Mm -hmm. Everyone kind of has their own thing. Um, you know, we've had customers come in from Africa and when I explain mofongo to them, they say, yeah, we call it, but we call it something else. Something else. Okay. Um, gotcha. So, you know, again, it's, it's a dish that's popular throughout the Caribbean, mm -hmm. so you, you won't just find it just in Puerto Rico. We just happen to call it mofongo. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, one more thing, when it comes to your food, now we have vegetarians here, we have a vegetarian audience in York City, so do you have any vegetarian options? Yes, we do. Um, it's been one of the things that we've actually uh, worked on over the years, mm -hmm. um, because our food isn't necessarily vegetarian friendly. Mm -hmm. um, we pretty much eat everything with some type of meat mm -hmm. um, or seafood. Um, but what we have done is we've taken some of our favorite dishes um, and made them uh, vegan. Um, okay. Just, you know, to, just to kind of 
uh, you know, show that segment of the population that we can do it. But we we didn't want to we didn't want to be an ethnic restaurant that just, you know, for example, had you know tofu on the menu, right? Um, mm-hmm. Just for the sake, you know, we still wanted to maintain the authenticity. So um, we we do have uh, vegetable empanadillas. Mm-hmm. Um, we also ha- regularly have a um, a stewed egg plant, um, which we typically mm-hmm. either with salted fish or pork uh, ribs in it mm-hmm. but instead we substituted obviously the meat but we kept the eggplant and it has tomatoes and cabbage and peppers um, it's very savory um, I actually had it yesterday mm-hmm. um, for myself personally so mm-hmm. um, and it is something that we are continuing to you know explore um, we just don't want to uh, throw a, a vegetarian or a vegan dish on the menu just for the sake of it right. and then not being true to what the dish itself represents in terms of flavor profile and everything else. So. Okay, okay, awesome. So there are options for everyone out there. Um, outside of Mi Caldero, um, I know I see you at different events throughout the city. So can you tell us a little bit about the things that you're involved in? Well, um, I mean, I, I do quite a few things mm-hmm. throughout the city. Um, I'm a part of uh, Latinos Unidos, um, an organization that was uh, recently started mm-hmm. um, in trying to um, be a resource um, for the Spanish-speaking community throughout, not just your city, but your county as well. Um, you know, just to kind of have, you know, and, and help and advocate for, you know, different services and mm-hmm. uh, different needs that uh, are uh, missing in the Latino community. Um, and I also just, in general, I like to participate in all different kinds of things when possible. Mm-hmm. So, um, sometimes mm-hmm. I find myself uh, have, you know, participating through just the food, uh, just because of the time limitations. Mm-hmm. I would love to be able to get out even more and be more involved, but in the instance that I can't, I'll try to make sure that my food mm-hmm. is there to right. you know, represent you know, mi caldero and mm-hmm. you know, my family and you know, everything that we stand for. So, and, and even along those lines, we get asked by a lot of different people who are very selective mm-hmm. as to who we work with. We try to work with people that um, whose uh, you know initiatives and missions are right. um, you know true to us. So things with the school district. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, um, I've done career days. I've you know just lots of different types of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I get that kind of from my mom. Like I said, um, mm-hmm. over the years, she she could now she's retired but you know she still stays involved not as much as before right but you know growing up i remember it was like she would drop us off to um, my brothers and i to our football basketball baseball practice Mm -hmm. and then she'd be running off to human relations commission meetings and united way meetings christmas addicts meetings so you know kind of just following in her footsteps and trying to be a voice Mm -hmm. you know for uh for you know, the Spanish-speaking people in our community, but just the community in, you know, as Absolutely. a whole. Absolutely. So that's just, outside of the business piece, you are also giving back to your community. So you have a heart to serve. And we definitely appreciate that. Thank so, you. Thank yeah, you. no problem at all. Um, so my next question would be for our kids. You grew up here in New York City and went to William Penn Senior High School, go Bearcats. Um, is there any advice that you have for a young Spanish kids out there, for kids in general that are here in New York City who may want to open their own restaurant or may want to help out with the family business but don't know how to um, do it? I mean, for, you know, for me, obviously, I'm, ve- I'm very proud of, of, you know, being, I try to be an ex- a, as best of an example for our kids, mm-hmm. both Spanish speaking, black, white. Um, I kind of look at it, um, I don't, unfortunately, we live in a society where we do have those classifications right. mm-hmm. um, I see them as more of a sometimes a way to divide us mm-hmm. um, Absolutely. and not bringing us together so I try to I look at it from the perspective of city kids urban kids mm-hmm. um, you know whether you know we, we speak Spanish or you know speak English or mm-hmm. you know we all have a lot of the similar you know similar experiences um, mm-hmm. as I'm sure you have yeah. as well you know growing up in the city and, right. and that's what mm-hmm. um, you know separates us um, in our experiences, um, you know, yes, York is a smaller city, mm-hmm. but you know, even going to Philadelphia and you know, living there and going to college there and everything, um, you see the same things regardless of which urban area you're in. Right. Right. Um, so, 
in terms of just the kids is just try to you know get as much experience as possible i never thought that i would ever be here mm -hmm. owning a restaurant my goal was to own my own business one day i didn't know what it was going to be mm -hmm. um but you know i really made it a point you know to get experience and not just you know i remember coming back from college and in the summer and you know working in the factories you know to have a summer job or whatever the case may be and you know even though i was working on the line or doing whatever i was trying to figure out what things i could learn from like a management perspective that i could apply and some mm -hmm. of those things still to this day apply to me as a restaurant owner even though it wasn't specific to um you know owning a restaurant right so i just you know try to just in general you know soak up your experiences mm -hmm. um because you can always learn something i mean my first job as a teenager was at the trash company you know and and mm -hmm. But there's systems and processes that I saw that, yes, I'm not working with trash and I'm working with food, but that can be applied, you know, to, you Same know, principles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. So you know, I just, you know, regardless of the job, I don't care, you know, whether it's, you know, and not anything against, you know, working at McDonald's or you know, working fast food, but mm -hmm. I did those types of jobs growing up, and take even if you don't like it, mm -hmm. just figure out what it is that I can learn from this job, whether it's, right. you know, a good mentor or, mm -hmm. you know, just dealing with customers, just take all the, soak all those experiences in because they will apply to you whether, you know, you own your own business, whether you own a restaurant, whether you're in the corporate world, it all matters, right. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I think sometimes we get so caught up in, you know, oh, I don't like this or I don't like that, mm -hmm. whereas you should take the best out of that experience for, because mm -hmm. you don't know whether it's, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, right. where that's gonna apply to you in your life and in your career and in, you know, with your family and all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. that's kind of just my general uh, message, you know, and, and to kids. And the other thing is try different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like I had mentioned, I grew up playing sports. I'm a huge sports fan, but you know, as, and it kind of took time as an urban kid, you know, mm -hmm. we're not um, exposed to you know the arts and history and, right. and, and that sort of thing mm -hmm. but you know as I got older just the little bit of, of experience that I had in those fields all that stuff matters right. you know and and you know just try different things you know try different jobs try different try jobs in different areas you know you can find your passion mm -hmm. um, um, in that you know don't just limit yourself to you know I'm gonna do this type of work, you know. And you also figure out what you like and what you don't like, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's kind of just generally speaking, you know, what I try to, you know, say. I mean, I was just having a conversation with one of my um, employees who's 16 years old mm -hmm. last night, and mm -hmm. you know, he asked me like, you know, did you go to school for a profession? And I said to him, I did go to college, but remember that a profession isn't just college. You know, a profession is, right. you know, going and becoming a plumber, becoming an electrician. Mm -hmm. You know, when you graduate high school, you know, going to barber school, yep. um, you know, different trades, different, mm -hmm. that is a profession as well. You know, and I think sometimes our kids, you know, get, especially in urban areas, you know, profession, profession, profession. Right. And we just constantly, you know, assume that it's college. Mm -hmm. well, college isn't for everyone. And you know we and we and we're actually in short supply, from what I gather, of skilled trade people. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so so that's the other thing. You know, and that's where trying different things, and you know, you would never know. Like I never knew that I was gonna love cooking, and you know, I mean, I, I grew up in a family where food was important, mm -hmm. and you know, we always helped mom out, and and that sort of thing. But I didn't know I was gonna find a passion in it, and mm -hmm. here I am. You know. So if they're, speaking of our young people, um, you know, summertime is coming up, and if maybe there's a teenager out there watching, happen to go past it and see, see you, see this interview on television, um, do you offer any opportunities for internships or community service or? Absolutely, okay. um, you know, we don't have like a, uh, a, a program um, set up per se, mm -hmm. um, but I have worked with Crispus Addicts in the past in terms of also, um, with summer things along with summer employment. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I actually, you know, I, I, I have four teenagers 
um, that I employ that you know they work a few days a week and on the weekends um, and it's just it's just really cool to see them you know in over time and their growth and you know you get to uh, you know not just show them you know obviously the work and the business side of it is important but you know showing them about work ethic and you know, showing them when you know when you give it your all look how you know great you do your job you know um, and just you know, also just be there as a sounding board to them. Um, yeah. You know, try to give them, you know, an opportunity to you know have someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, and I always say to them, I'm not your mom or your dad, but I'm gonna be 100% brutally honest with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so um, yeah, you know, we kids feel free to you know come down, fill out applications, or mm-hmm. even be a part of you know the Christmas Addicts. And I know there's different organizations throughout the city that mm-hmm. have summer employment. Right. Um, opportunities. I mean, that might be something good for us to, uh, you know, promote yeah. with this as well. You yeah. know, as we're coming into that mm-hmm. um, time of the year. So, um, yeah, absolutely, good stuff. So, not only are you giving back, you know, with participating with different nonprofits, but you give back to our kids as well, which is awesome because one, it gives them employment, um, and it gives them a way to have some type of income to help support them and maybe their family. Um, and then two, it teaches them about how to run a business, um, what discipline, work ethic, and all that stuff. So thank you for doing that as well. Now, for those that may be watching who don't know much about Mi Caldero, um, what are your hours? What's your location? Um, we're, at, we're located at 605 South George Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're in Suite 120. We're in the Loretta Claiborne building. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we're open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Monday, uh, Thursday and Friday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. and then Saturdays, 11 to 9. Um, as of now, we're closed on Sundays. Okay. Um, and you can find us at uh, Mi Caldero uh, Restaurant on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're also working on getting our webpage uh, put up and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So we got a f- few cool things coming uh, moving forward in the future that we're working on, and you know, hopefully they all come to fruition and uh, we can continue to be a part of the community and. Uh, continue to grow. Okay. So, are you um, eating, takeout? Can people call in their orders? And- um, uh, we're, you know, we're uh, fast casual, so it's a very casual dining experience. So, we do dine in. Mm-hmm. Um, we do takeout. Um, so, you know, dine in and takeout is is uh, is our uh, is our go to. But mm-hmm. um, we also do, uh, you know, catering um, as well. And um, you know, we do different types of events, mm-hmm. not just throughout York, but kind of. In the area, the whole area. South um, Central PA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Great. Great. Good stuff. All right. So, um, you're on social media, um, on Facebook. Um, you're also on TripAdvisor. You have wonderful reviews. Um, so I did see that when I googled you guys. Um, and I think that tells us a little bit about yourself and about your restaurant. Um, I think it's always important because a lot of times when we go to restaurants, we just order our food. Yeah. But this is an awesome opportunity for people to get to know you and get to see another side of you. So I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. You're welcome and um, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Is there anything else that you would like to share with um, the York City community? I um, just thank you for all the support over the years. Um, I wouldn't have been able to be where I'm at um, and have been afforded the opportunities that I've been afforded without the community, mm-hmm. you know? So um, just thank you. Awesome. Well, York City, you've had a chance to meet Mr. Oziel Bones, who is the owner of Mi Caldero Restaurant. Um, if you haven't had time to or a chance to support the restaurant, we encourage you to come down. We're right here in the heart of York City, right off of Duke Street, on George Street at the Loretta Claiborne Building. Um, come out and support. And if you get a chance to see Oziel, say hi. So thank you so much for tuning in to Council Spotlight, and we'll see you the next time. Have a good day.